All right, moving on to the next question. Let me see. Just reading, reading some more questions here. Somebody said, uh, "Hey Bruce, when you get a chance, would you comment on your transition from being a ISO uh, in the military to civilian world?" Oh man, I can really speak on this one. I'm thinking about making the jump, but feel a little intimidated. Uh, okay, yeah. So Alex, like this is really this is my life right here, man. Like this right here, like I can definitely walk you through what happened to me to trying to trying to give you like a an idea of where I'm at. So just for context, I went into the military and in, um in the nineties, right? So I'm a, I'm an old dude. I'm an old head, man. So in the nineties, I was in the military going to war zones and shit. Like sucked, man. I was a I was a security um I was a security forces member, right? That's when they called it security force. I don't know what they call it now, but I was a cop in the military, basically. And I was a weapon specialist. That was my thing. I just learned. I know, like, I know everything about the M16A2 uh, rifle. I know everything about the, I can take it apart and put it back together blindfolded. <laughs> the M16A2 as a magazine fed gas operated I, like i could i could break it all down to you like that was my specialty anyway i cross trained uh into com because that's what I, I liked computers i was obsessed with computers and this was the 90s remember so there was like that computer that boom on the internet like the google was came out and you had you know you had amazon blowing like it just came out it wasn't even blowing up yet they were like people like amazon what's that yahoo this is Alta Vista. I don't know if you guys remember that site. That was a search engine that was popular at the time, right? I'm dating myself, AOL, all that kind of stuff. So that was at that time. I cross trained in 2000. I cross trained into uh, into computers uh, in the military, and it was known as uh, computer operator. And I just wanted to do like Linux, and I wanted to do like I wanted to be a server administrator or or a Cisco router guy or something like that. So they threw me into what's now known as ISO work. So I, I hated it. Um, I, I hated it with a burning passion of a thousand suns. I did not like it. I was sitting in a skiff. And then they were like, they didn't even tell me how to do it. Like they just gave me a bunch of manuals and said, you're going to be, we need you to do this system security authorization agreement, right? Which is now called a system security plan. But I was like, what? And they're like, yeah, you need to do this this document because we need to get a certification for this this classified system we have. And I'm like, I don't even know what the hell they're talking about, right? I, keep in mind, I'm just I'm a I'm a freaking I came from like I was a physical security guy who was a weapon specialist, and now you know they're throwing me into this into this skiff when they're telling me to do this document and stuff. And I'm like, man. So I started reading from scratch. Like I, I was self-taught. I just started reading all the regulations. They had all these DOD regulations. They had like the Rainbow Series. They had, uh, it was called Diacap at the time. Long story short, I learned how to be an ISO and I wrote my first uh, authorization package. And I sent it up and it got approved and uh, hated every minute of it, right? But it, I did such a great job. I hated it, but I did a great job. <laughs> That's all I knew, right? Later on, I was able to do firewalls. I was able to do network engineering. I was able to get my hand. You know how the military is. They kind of let you play with so many different things. I got all these certifications and stuff. I was, really go I was a go-getter, so I went and did everything I could to learn as much as I could. Uh, and it wasn't easy. Like I got a degree when I was in the military. I was working full-time. I just had a kid. They sent me to freaking Afghanistan. Like It was a nightmare. So... I became an ISO in the military, and then they tried to send me to Iraq again, and I was like, I do not want to go to Iraq. I've been, you just, you guys just sent me to Afghanistan. It was a hellhole. I could tell you that's a whole nother video. I could tell you all kinds of stories about that. Like that was a freaking. I wasn't even there that long. The army guys is who I really felt bad for. I just came there to fix some morale con computers. They were, it was like we were, we were saviors, man. We came there. We we hooked up some. Uh, some systems of morale computers. It was basically the only way that people can, some people can communicate with their families. So when we hooked those things up, they were like, 
oh my god you guys are lifesavers people were crying it was crazy we had to hook up a network from scratch and then we had to hook up the computer anyway so i have some technical skills i got out of the military uh and the reason why is because they were going to send me back to a war zone and i'm like dude i missed my kids first steps i've missed my kids first words you guys are going to send me to another war zone so i can almost get killed and i got out that's the reason why i got out and i i was i was afraid i'm like man i all I knew was the military. My entire adult life up to that point was the military. So I really didn't – it was it was a wake-up call. I had more debt than ever, right? Like you don't realize how much the military takes care of you. And I'm not trying to encourage you to stay in by any stretch of the imagination. The military has its own issues. So I, I, don't, bl I don't blame you at all for getting out. I'm just telling you, just be ready for the financial reality of the civilian world because it's no joke, bro. <laughs> it's no joke man anyway i had a, I had a mortgage i got a house with a va loan va loans dope by the way do that uh make sure you you uh write down every single ailment you have especially your back man as you get older all the stuff you've done in the military starts to hit you your ears man you won't hear the same anymore you if you've shot, shot weapons like i did the whole time you went to a combat zone you might have ringing in your ears you want to make sure all that's in your medical records side note make sure that's in your medical records because they'll pay you for that stuff right so make sure you don't be one of these tough guys and say oh i don't need that you know i don't you know no man as you get older you start falling apart and it's, and the military puts some miles on you i know if you're a young 20 year old dude young 30 year old guy you don't see it you're a tough guy man as you get older all the stuff you did in the military anyway put it in your medical records that's all i'll say about that i got out of the military and um I started, I did not want to do anything involving information security officer or risk management framework. I didn't want to do it. So I applied for a job doing like a um, field technician. I was a field technician for like a year or two years. And I, I learned Linux deeply. I learned how to do a little scripting. I learned how to, I just dove into just straight up technical stuff. You know, with I had a mentor. He was walking me through everything. Him and I are friends to this day. I can that guy could teach some stuff. I wish he would teach, but he doesn't. Anyway, so I did that for a couple years. Here's what happened. Here's what happened, Alex. Um, turns out field technicians don't get paid that much, right? Uh, and then they want to overwork you. So. I got a, I got, I start putting my resume out again. And this time I was like, I'm open to going back into cybersecurity, right? I got so many offers immediately to do risk management framework, what they called DIACAP at that time. They called it DIACAP back then. So I'm, again, I'm dating myself, but they contacted me and uh, they said, hey, could you do DIACAP for this or for the Air Force, right? And I'm a civilian now. And I, I was being solicited by this other contracting agency to do work. And I said, yes, they offered me like, I don't know, 25% more money to do 25% less work. <laughs> I mean, like, I, like I, it was an offer I, I couldn't refuse. So I took the job. And uh, what I learned was uh, cybersecurity pays more, right, because it's a specialization. Risk management framework. And information system security officer work pays more than your counterparts in the government civilian sector. Although government civilian sector will allow you to retain your total active duty military. So I, I would you, you definitely want to weigh your options, especially if you have kids or whatever. You want to retire, right? It just depends on what you want to do. But if you become a contractor with Northrop Grumman, Lockheed Martin, or SAIC, or name your three, four letter uh, corporate entities, any one of those guys is going to pay you pretty good like six figures, right? If you're coming out of the military, you got two, three years of experience. Um, it depends on where you're at too. Six figures don't really go that far. If you're in, say, Maryland, D.C. area, six figures, like, you know, what do you, what do you mean six figures? Is it 100,000 or is it 120,000, right? There's a there's a difference, right? And where, like 100,000 in Texas or 100,000 in, say, Omaha, Nebraska is is a, is really good compared to a hundred thousand in Maryland. So it depends on where you're gonna go. That so these are just some of the things I learned when I got out of the military. Just things I would I would do if I were you. Um, as far as mindset is uh, it's different, right? It's it's more dog eat dog in the civilian sector. Um, you gotta 
you don't have anything to worry about. You're gonna know your stuff out of coming out of the military. Vets are no, are no joke because you guys, you know, we we know our stuff. Like we've been doing it for for some. We've been indoctrinated in this world. So I would just make sure you uh, tighten up your resume, right? Use don't use military speak. Use civilian speak, right? Don't use a bunch of acronyms as much as possible. Translate to a more civilian. So people need to know what you're talking about, right? Um, like for example, if you had a, a a weapon system you worked on as an ISO and it was called J two F five eighty three, right? Don't put that in your resume. <laughs> Just call it a weapon system. You know, call it a a a, a Unix based weapon system that used Lin, uh, Linux Red Hat, right? So the key words for the civilian sector are things like Red Hat, Lin, you know different versions of linux different version how many years of experience you have you know, maybe uh the technical stuff that you want to put in there don't put any kind of military as much as possible don't put any military jargon don't put that you are a flight sergeant for you got to put you are a manager for 400 student you, you know what i'm saying like you have to put the the proper terminology right in there so that that's just when tighten up your resume make Make it for a civilian world, the civilian sector. Um, if you can, get your finish out your degree if you have one. Uh, if you don't have a degree, make sure you get like get out with a professional level certification because that's going to take you. That means like a CISA or a CISSP or a CEH or something or a CAP. ISC two CAP is good. Um, I a CASP, CompTIA CASP is good. Get something like that and make the military pay for it, right? Tighten up your resume, get one of the certifications, get your degree if you have one. If not, get yourself a professional level certification. Um, what else? The mindset of civilians are, is totally different, right? It, it's a dog eat dog. You don't have like a comp that camaraderie you had in the military. You know, you, you have this mission oriented camaraderie in the military that you don't really have in the corporate space. Corporate space is all about just, it's kind of every man for himself kind of attitude i mean i hate to say it but that's the truth um that's that's about it i mean i hope that that helps you know um if you if you're thinking about making the jump just make sure you're prepared it's not it's not a bad move to be honest with you